Hey yo, Omni Dog here. Thanks for tuning in to my overview and review of these books. Always please remember go to Organic Prize Books where you can use my code for two dollars off Omni Dog with the code Omni Dog and five percent off shipping three or more books together with Omni Code. Omni Code. That's right. Omni Dog ship it together. So thank you to Organic Prize Books for that. And Let's get started on the Neil Gaiman Libraries. Now, I'm also going to be reviewing the latest book, Chivalry. And you may be saying, Jess, if you knew, if you know that they are releasing all his stories in oversize, why did you buy the smaller book? I don't know. I guess I just really wanted to read the story. Uh... I don't have an explanation, but I'm going to review Chivalry after I get done giving you an overview and review of these books. I, I, uh, I, I'm not smart. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. I can't tell you why I did that. So here we go. Volume one with these stories in it. Study an Emerald, Murder Mysteries, How to Talk to a Girl's Parties, Forbidden Brides. And I'm not going to take the dust jackets off because the inside is the exact same. Very nice books, as always. These are Dark Horse books. Come with a ribbon. The binding is very nice. You can see there... Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. And the reason you would want to get these is because of the art. Now, obviously, you're going to want to enjoy the story, too. I have all of these books already in standard size, which I'm selling. If you want to try and buy them, omnidogsvault2 at gmail.com. Be happy to give you a good price. Uh, the reason is because all this art is nothing less than outstanding. The stories range from very good to great. Uh, it's going to depend on how you feel about Neil Gaiman's stories and his fantasy, uh, his writing of fantasy. Uh, I, I love them. I, I love almost all these stories, and I'll tell you which book I think is the best. Uh, all of them are available at Organic Price Books. They, they are um, works of art, I think. They, they are some of the top artists in comics today. Yeah, uh, you can see right. I'll I'll go here. Let's go right into book one, and they have the breakdown here. Study in Emerald, art is by Raphael Albuquerque. Murder Mysteries, P. Craig Russell. How to talk to girls at parties. Moon and Ba. Forbidden Brides. Uh, Shane Oakley. So the first one, a study in Emerald is a bit of a Sherlock Holmesian tale that involves a bit of a Lovecraftian element in it. And as always, I don't want to spoil these, so I'm just going to show you uh, the art, and I'll tell you what I think of the stories. Guy bursts into this Sherlock Holmesian type character, and they discuss things, blah, blah, blah. The guy ends up being Sherlock Holmes' sidekick, sort of, for the investigation into something to do with the royal family. Uh, it appears to be Victorian England, turn of the century type, horse and buggy, coal being burned for heat, stuff like that. Uh, this, this story is excellent. I loved it. And this art is beautiful. And it's actually quite a long story, so I will show you a lot of the art right here. And as I said, I loved the book, the story, A Study in Emerald. And I don't want to spoil it, so I'm looking way ahead. Okay. Prologue. Okay, whoops, that shows you the end of the story, so I don't want to show it. So we'll go right on to Murder Mysteries. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories in all of these books. 
uh, a guy is sitting by himself in L.A. You see, P. P. Craig Russell's art is just ridiculously good. He's got a backstory. The guy, he's but he's sitting on a bench, and a guy comes up to tell him a story. Here's the prologue to the story. Um, there's a murder in the Silver City, which is what Neil Gaiman has called heaven. And that Silver City is canon in the DC universe, but it sounds like it's canon just in the Gaiman verse. Um, and it involves the, a murder in the Silver City, a murder in heaven. Heaven is populated with nothing but angels. And this particular angel has been assigned to finding out who the murderer is and exact the vengeance of God upon this murderer. And it is gorgeous art and a brilliant story, I think. I dug it, like, immensely. There you get a feeling for it all. And there's a lot of layers to this story and I thought it was really well done. Of course, I don't want to spoil it, so we'll go ahead to the next one. And the next one is how to talk to girls at parties where a couple of guys are looking to talk to chicks at parties, at a party. This guy is the less confident one. This guy is the very confident one. And the girls they run into at this particular party are a little bit different. <laughs> and I don't want to give away that, this story. I enjoyed this story. Uh, not as much as the other stories, but I still enjoyed it. The girls have a little bit of a twist to them. And I don't want to spoil it and give away the ending, but it involves the less confident guy and his dealing with the girls at the party and the very confident guy. It's more about this guy's story about talking to girls. He has trouble talking to girls in general. And at this party, uh, he feels kind of singled out, lonely, and it's a pretty good story. I liked it. And let's see, skip, skip, skip. Nope. Don't want to show that one off. Okay, because I don't want to spoil it. Then we go to the final story. Forbidden, <laughs> Forbidden Brides of the Face of Slaves in the Secret House of the Night of Dread Desire. And here is the artwork for it. I enjoyed this one too. And then there is, let's show you one couple more pages of art. And then there's bonus content at the end. The second one, this is probably my favorite one. I loved all the stories in this book. These are the stories. The facts in the case of the departure of Miss Finch, likely stories, Harlequin Valentine, Troll Bridge. And the artists, Mark Buckingham, John Bolton, Colleen Doran, and Michael Zuli. Likely Stories is a collection of stories that involve this particular bar in town. And I enjoyed this a lot. Okay, there we go. Uh, there is some nudity in these books. I'll try not to show it, but I mean, these are mature audience books. For the most part, 
these are not kids for kids. These are for grown-ups. This is the next story in um, Likely Stories. Oop, there's some of the nudity. And this is the next story. Uh, this was a really multi-layered story about a guy uh, that checks out a girly magazine when he's younger and is entranced by the girl in it. And she haunts his dreams and he ends up being a photographer, but he sees her in all different kinds of magazines at all different times, kinds, times of life. And it's a very multi-layered interest. I'm trying not to show. There we go. It's a very, very multi-layered story, actually. I, I thought it went in a lot of interesting places and really was remarkable. And here's another one. This is a story about a haunted cottage and the children that want to explore it. And it's really good. I dug it. Then we go to Troll Bridge, illustrated by the fabulous Colleen Doran. And this little boy is enjoying life in general, having fun running around the countryside until he meets a troll under a bridge. And it's a great story that goes on from there about how this little kid meets and deals with this troll for the rest of his life. Don't want to give that away. Then the next, whoop, the next one's Harley Quinn. Didn't want to give away that ending of that story. This is based on an Italian play, and there's a whole explanation of it in the back of the book. Harley Quinn Valentine, I believe it's an Italian play, La Comedia dell'Arte, Commedia dell'Arte. Uh, Harley Quinn takes his heart out, plants it on the door of the woman he's in love with. She can't see him. And this is a really well done start. Look at this story. Look at this art by John Bolton. It is just gorgeous. And I, I loved this story. I, I loved every story in this book, but this one is really, really good. And I'll probably stop here because I don't want to give it away. What's happening? She doesn't know what to do with the heart. And he's in love with her, following her around invisibly. Then we come to the last one, which is the disappearance of Miss Finch, the departure of Miss Finch. And it's very, very interesting. It's really cool uh, about friends that take a woman named Miss Finch who is a bit of a hmm, emotionless, she's Miss Finch. She's kind of a cold fish, a little bit emotionless. And they take her to an underground sort of circus or performance. And she disappears. It is called The Disappearance of Miss Finch. So I'm not spoiling anything, but this is some kind of performance and she disappears and then they have to try and find her and the ending is awesome. And then in the back is where we get the bonus material. And here's the whole notes on the Harley Quinnade. Sketches from Troll Bridge, bonus material like that. The third, whoop, the third book is, contains snow glass apples, problem of Susan, only in the underworld again, creatures of the night. And I am going to put these books here so I don't lose them. Snow glass apples, again, Colleen Doran, Fabius Lart, Problem of Susan and Other Stories, P. Craig Russell, Scott Hampton, Paul Chadwick of Concrete fame, Only the End of the World Again, Craig Russell, Creatures of the Night, Michael Zuli. Uh, this is the first story, Snow Glass Apples. 
fabulously illustrated by, by Colleen Doran. And it's a bit of a twist on the Snow White fairy tale where the queen is the good one and Snow White is the evil one. And what the queen goes through having a child, an adopted child, it's the, it's the king's daughter after the king dies. What is she going to do with this kid? <laughs> Great story. I think this is one of Neil Gaiman's strongest individual stories that was released. Just, and look at this art. Whoop, I probably shouldn't show that. I mean, you're all grown-ups out there, but you never know. So look at this wonderful art. It's just Colleen Doran's so great. And we'll skip ahead to the problem of Susan and other stories. This is illustrated by P. Craig Russell. It's about a children. The first one's about a children's author that has this kind of lion and the witch in the wardrobe dream all the time. And she gets interviewed. This is a strong story. I really enjoyed it. Let's see what some of the other ones are. Because I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, this is all. She gets interviewed. Just look at this beautiful art. The other story is Locks. About a father telling his child fairy tales. And then we come to... October in the chair, which is the months of the year sitting around a campfire telling stories to each other. And the stories that they tell are really cool. So you can enjoy this art. And then we get to this is the Paul Chadwick illustration, The Day the Saucers Came. It's a short story, so I don't want to show too much. So there's Ch Paul Chadwick's Only the End of the World Again. This is a long one, and it deals with a guy that is a werewolf. This has a bit of a Lovecraftian feel to it also because not only is he a werewolf, but he's having to deal with Lovecraftian monsters that are coming alive and the role he has to play in it with all these odd characters where he lives and works that he's just moved to. <laughs> and it's an unusual story to say the least, but I enjoyed it. It's quite long, but well worth the read. Let's see, what do we have coming up here? Okay, so you can see it's very long here. And then a really touching story was called The Price. This is Michael Zuli that drew this. It's about a guy that inherits cats all the time. And this one particular cat that he inherits. I, this story was remarkable. It was very emotional. Very... Um, I'm not a big cat lover, but I'm more of a dog person, you know, but this was a very moving story, very beautifully illustrated and really, really well done. The story is extremely strong and so is the art. I, I mean, I was very moved by this story. And then there's another story at the end about the owl princess daughter of owls rather she's like an owl princess this is the final story in the series i definitely don't want to spoil this because it's a it's a short one but look at the beautiful art and then this book comes with a ton of bonus stuff so i love this book too but then we come to the best of all, chivalry. Neil Gaiman, Colleen Doran, I, I feel like Colleen Doran doesn't get enough credit. Yes, I'm aware she's won, I, I know she's won multiple awards. The industry recognizes her as a great artist. I don't know that fans do. Um, maybe I'm wrong. 
Uh, that's just my feeling. But you look at this book and you will have an enormously fun time because it's about an old woman in England who visits a secondhand store. I believe it's called Oxfam Shop. She's an older woman and she likes going in there. She has a very routine life. She's a widow, a widow, and she ends up finding <laughs> the Holy Grail there in the Oxfam shop with a very uninterested girl selling it to her. And next thing she knows, she gets a visit. <laughs> From Sir Galahad. Wait, I'm pretty sure it's Sir Galahad. Or Galad, as they're calling him. He's on his quest for the Holy Grail. He shows up to her door. Oh, Galad. Sir Galahad is called Galad here. The neighborhood kids <laughs> look at his horse. He's, he's you know... His quest is to find the Holy Grail, and this woman has it on her mantelpiece. And she said, no, I just don't want any gold. I'm not, I'm not interested in anything. He tries trading her stuff, sends her off, sends him off, goes back to her life, and he comes up back again. And he comes back again and again with all these wonderful gifts. And she's like, I, I'm, ha I'm fine with the Holy Grail uh, just sitting on my mantelpiece. And so it is a wonderful story, wonderful, beautiful, gentle story about the relationship she develops between the knight and herself and the gifts he tries to give her and the life she lives. And now here's the same girl that was the uninterested one at Oxfam, but Sir Galad visited her and all of a sudden she's dressed up and her personality's coming out and she's entranced by <laughs> Sir Galad and uh, he's had an impact on her and she, he has an impact on the widow. It goes on. It is just a beautiful, wonderful book. And in the back of it, Colleen Doran goes through all the steps she took to try to make this the, the most beautiful book she could. He ends up giving rides to the neighborhood kids, helps her move stuff in the attic. I loved this book. I'm sure it will come out in some, look at this. I'm sure it will come out in some oversized edition in the future and I will want it because this is my favorite book that Neil Gaiman's ever done with fabulous art by Colleen Doran. And I just can't say enough about it. You will love this book. 100% recommend it. 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 2 thumbs up. Yay, Neil Gaiman and Colin Dor Colleen Doran. Chivalry is one of my books of the year. So thank you for tuning in. This is Omnidog signing off. I appreciate all my viewers out there. You guys are great. Please go to organicpricebooks.com. Use my code Omnidog for $2 off. Omnidog should put together. 5% off should be 30 more books together. Peace and love. Peace and love. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Happy to talk to you about books. Thank you so much for watching. Peace and love.